handouts with you. You just follow through and then um, I'll write comments and then you can follow then and there. So we are going to discuss about the connective tissue too and that cartilages and bones. The previous lecture, uh, we covered the connective tissue one, that's on fibers, right? That's on collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and, and the synthesis and, and the mode of, uh, um, uh, uh, of where it, uh, you find, what is the function of these fibers that we have done already. But the connective tissue as a definition itself, it's still connecting two different organs and, uh, and then, um, you know, it, it gives a support major support in this uh, um, uh, topic, what we are going to discuss is the cartilages and bones, okay. So you have studied in earlier class about cartilage, but we will go a little bit extra today. The objective of this class, uh, we are going to discuss about the origin and, and then location and structure um, and, and, and different type of uh, cartilage, a hyaline cartilage we will discuss, elastic cartilage and fibrous cartilage and uh, where uh, and where do you find this one, when do you find these cartilages in this one, okay. And then we are going to discuss the bone as a tissue and bone as an organ. Okay. So in your in your class in a multiple choice question I am asking that bone as a as an organ and bone as a tissue, why do you say that's another uh, short answer question which I will, I will I'll ask you in the exam. How do you describe as a bone as an organ and bone as a as a as a tissue? So then we are going to give a comparison. This is another short answer questions we will discuss in this class about the intramembranous with the endochondrial bone. Okay, what is the intramembrane uh, membranous bones and what what do you mean by endochondrial bone? That's another one. And then we are going to study the bone cells which are present as an osteoclast, osteoblast and osteocytes. And then what is the role, what, what, what type of functions they have, so that we are going to discuss, okay. And then uh, in, 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 with respect to the resorption, bone resorption and remodeling, and that's on the uh, repair of the bone and fracture, what, how the bone is remodeled, that we will discuss in this class today. Then events in the bone repair, that's what I explained to you. If you have a fracture, how that fracture is healed, we will discuss that. And then periosteum and perichondrium, the periosteum is the one which is on a covering membrane of bone and then perichondrium which is going on to the you know, chondrocytes which is present mainly on cartilage. The cartilage covering, cartilage wrapping, cartilage, you know, it's, it's being covered by a membrane, that's called perichondrium is not pericardium. I'll again explain to you, just like you confuse with some other things with the microphage or macrophage, just one letter, it makes so much of difference. Here also the perichondrium, so don't get your impression, hey, how uh, periosteum is covering off uh, of a bone and pericardium, you think the pericardium and then it's a covering of a heart. That is different, that we will discuss later on, but here in this chapter, periosteum and perichondrium means that's an, uh, it's a cartilage covering of this membrane. Bone growth then, in which uh, we are going in, in width, sorry, in width as well as in the bone in length, how the bone is growing, you know, long bone, we, are, we will study about uh, what is responsible for this bone growth and bone length. And then interstitial and oppositional growth, that is going along with the bone growth, discuss, and bone matrix and versus cartilage matrix. As I mentioned, the matrix in, in earlier class in the ground substance, which we some of you studied, and they also have their own cells. Is that right? That's what we, we discussed last class. And this one, uh, we will study what made in the bone matrix, what is the difference between the cartilage matrix and bone matrix. That we will study. And fine structure of bone, and then made a cartilage structure, or ultra structure. So when you see under the microscopic picture of bone, when you do the section of bone, what what is the structure you will expect uh, when compared to the cartilage and what you expect from the cartilage. And then type of articulation, type of articulation, there are different types of movements in our body because we are studying the cartilage and bones, the, the bone movement, you know, can you, can you, uh, you know, tilt the hand like this up to this and, and you can do like this, but you cannot do it, but somebody will do it, you know, touching this one here and, and here, I mean, that's some magic but the normal human being, they cannot do it. 
So you can bend in one side and you can bend the other side and you cannot do in the opposite side like a hand. I can, I can bend like this, but I cannot bend like this. So like that of articulation, how the bone is formed or the cartilage is being restricted. <coughs> so we will study uh, some of those aspects today at the end of this class and there's an animation, we will see that too. Now, the next one is the skeletal framework in vertebrates, uh, that's on the intercellular matrix. We will see that matrix in the, in the skeletal matrix or the bone matrix. The bone matrix is composed of what? Inorganic calcium, carbonate, phosphate and less of proteoglycans. This is for the bone, okay? But when you go in the cartilage, that have more of dry weight of collagen, more of collagen which is present in cartilage. So that's the major difference. Okay, cartilage versus bone matrix, the difference. You have to study because I'm asking the question in the short answer. What is the difference between matrix of cartilage and matrix of bone? Okay, we'll see that. I mean, this is one of the example. Uh, the low power photomicrograph of diaphysis shaft developing the long bone. You can see that one. And then um, here the periosteum, the D is a periosteum, the D, you know, this one. This is the covering of periosteum, covering, okay. And uh, the B represent the medullary bone or spongy bone. It could be here, the medullary or spongy bone. And then D mark the periosteum, and then the dark basophilic staining between spongy bones and marrow. Here you have this is the bone marrow. We will study um, uh, later on on the same bone marrow type of bone marrow. So now again the cartilage and bone. The difference cartilage is a vascular, no calcified, yeah, vascular. It is not. It is a typographical one. It is a avascular it is a one word that's what i want to clearly say into the powerpoint in the lecture now don't think that it's a vascular it is a avascular means there is no vascularization for the cartilage here okay and no calcified matrix and low uh, metabolic rate and no self repair that limited in mitosis high tensile strength or elasticity because of collagen and and elastic fiber present in the cartilage and fiber uh, the different type of cartilage, we will study elastic cartilage and fibrocartilage, you know, hyaline cartilage, we will see all those today. See, in bone, it's a highly vascular. Vascular means you have more blood supply into the bone. And high metabolic rate, because of the uh, vascularization, you will get more of nutrients to the cells, and that will do metabolism, right? And self-repair is possible because of active mitosis. And calcified matrix, which is present here, unlike in cartilage, you have collagen, which is more flexible, elasticity, but here the calcified, so that will give you, a, you, you have a strength of, of the bone. And the complete structure and depot of our calcium storage. So you have a calcium storage in the bone, whereas in cartilage, you won't find here. So the major difference you have to remember in this class. What is the difference between bone and a cartilage? Now, the next one, cartilage, that in subordinate, role in support, protective, resilience, bearing weight, rigid, flexible, consists of cells, fiber and ground substance. You see the fiber, water, GS here is a ground substance, that is extracellular matrix as, an, as an, uh, a ground substance. More of gag and proteoglycan, glycos amino glycans. That is, uh, I call it as a gag here. I will write it in a, a document camera, which is going on. G A G, okay. Glyco, glyco amino, glycos amino glycan. G A G glycos amino glycans. Okay. And then bone, you get matrix that's calcified as a calcium phosphate, which is a calcium reservoir. 
and then released in a controlled fashion at the use of body. Joints, that you got articulation sites of osseous and cartilaginous um, components, unite the bones and the body and permit various degrees of movements. So the joints, that's an articulation, we will see that one. So this is the, um, the one which is present in between the bones, you know, cartilages that present in between the bone. Why? Because it has collagen or elasticity so that you give, the, give a cushion for uh, any of the frictions against the movement. So that's what it, the cartilage, the use of cartilage, the bone. And then the development of the site, human embryo, when the human embryo develops at the fifth prenatal week, the cartilage first appears from that. So the origin is mesenchyme of somites and neural crest cells and stellar or mesenchymal cells. It goes like this. Mesenchymal cells gives rise to chondroblasts. Here, this is a type of chondroblast, not chondroblast, chondroblast. You add O here. And then combined with the elastic fibers and collagen fibers. And then deposit the extracellular matrix. Again, it's an abbreviation. I'm uh, writing it. ECM, please mention like an extracellular matrix, ECM. And then it gives rise to chondrocytes. Okay. And then the chondrocytes, in, in other words, will produce more of the more of, uh, of um, extracellular like glycosaminoglycans and, and chondritin sulfates and everything. And thereby, you know, you get a, a, a cartilage uh, at the development stage. That's the cartilage is appearing at the fifth prenatal week. The next one. Embryonic skeleton. It is a hyaline type. Okay, hyaline, as I mentioned before, um, as a flexible one, more of collagen type, and then you have uh, elasticity is there. Okay, so when um, when I've seen in the news, I've read in some other um, a baby of uh, six months old. Okay, dropped from sixth floor of the hospital by accident, not purposely by accident. Gone down to the earth from the top. What will happen? Gone to pieces. Same time, an adult, he got depressed and committed suicide on the same floor, coming down, falling down. Both of them are coming down. Okay. Who will get more injury? Adult? Why? He can escape, right? Yeah. He's more depressed, right? So he'll go top, head down, and then <laughs> dive down the earth, and then got flash. Is everything gone? The same thing with the babies coming out with the head down, but smiling. Maybe, maybe he's not smiling, but he's crying, but but he's alive. Okay. But it won't get panicking. Number one, because he's enjoying the air, flying there, you know. And then he's coming down. But I'm not going to, I mean, argue in that sense. But the thing is, it's a sick, but they will not get of the fracture. Number of fractures is less when compared to the adult will, will die. So that's the two part. Meaning the, the, the one, the embryonic, the highly type of cartilage, still they are in cartilage, the development of the six months old this baby. It happens in one of these news. Uh, not the adult one that everybody will know about it, but, but this one. The baby dropped from sixth floor alive, just coming down, and then probably a minor injury. No minor injury, half hours, not, not like a fracture, but it is alive. So that's the status of the hyaline cartilage. That's what I want to mention to you about it. And then the, the development will go like replaced by bone, meaning you get, you need some sort of a cartilage at the beginning of the development. Later on, that is replaced by by the uh, by bone with the uh, calcium ossification, like a calcium phosphate, uh, and those inorganic substances will go in and replace the uh, collagen and other type. So that's why the embryon embryonic stage into the adult stage, and then the this is something like uh, the growth uh, phase. If you find cell growth centers in long bones, enabling the bone growth, this is the formation we will see in a bit later. But other cartilage persists in articular surface. But except this epiphyseal, the long bones that is replaced by the adult bone, 
but the cartilage at the time of development of embryonic development we have you know the joints and everything at the embryonic development even that is persist as a cartilage that is not being replaced by the bone certain area certain type especially in the joints the the cartilage at the time of development is uh, persist till in the last except the seven bones it has been replaced by 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 study bones so that's the meaning and uh, costo sternal junction what is the costo or costo sternal junction what is that what is sternum yes Like, uh, just look at that one here. Yes, I am getting a skeleton here. It's going on like this, right? Okay, it's some sort of this. These are the ribs. Have you taken? Have you eaten ribs? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, this one. So the green one. Okay, the, the here you, you get the back of that, that's on vertebral column and, and, and there's a type of uh, 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 cartilage which is back, that's a fibrocartilage. And then here, this part here, the joining here, it is uh, a costal, uh, uh, I mean, sternal junction. This is the sternum, 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 it's the middle. So this junctions, this junctions is made up of, uh, it's made up of the costal sternal junctions and between the rib and sternum is a rib and sternum in between that so that's uh, did i explain i think in the lab i explained to you about um what is the purpose of this skeleton this uh, this one ribs it protect the heart and protect the lungs right so lungs is going on uh, on behind uh, behind or inside the, the inside this right yeah, the lungs is there, right? So, if there is uh, anything happens inside the lung, what you have to do it, and you have to cut open the <coughs> ribs, and then you do the surgery. In some part, they are doing it. In sometimes in open heart surgery, also they they used to cut some part of this one and do it. But where they used to cut, so that's the thing. They they in between this, there's a muscles. That's what you I asked you about it. You know. That muscle is uh, more tasty. That's why you are eating the ribs of that one, right? You are not eating the bones, right? You are eating the ribs. So the ribs in between that muscles, but that full of blood vessels. But if you cut here because of the bone, you have a vascular. You have the blood vessels, right? And if you cut here in the sternum in the junction, if you do that, and then uh, you won't get much of blood loss. So that's what it happens when when they are, when they are passenger in the flight from UK from England to New York and he suffered from the plural effusion the accumulation of fluid in this then he will die soon probably within maybe an hour or so so that is the situation when the flight does, uh, uh, attendant ask anybody in doctors and then one guy got into this luckily surgeon and then he got up and helped them up he has to perform the surgery in the air so what he did, he asked about um, no equipments or anything surgical. So he got a whiskey bottle and a coat hanger. So he cut open here with the whiskey and everything you know strap and then insert that coat hanger, and and then he insert uh, uh, you know the needle and then he effluves. He just drained the fluid in the lungs out. And the passenger saved and then happily landed in New York and then admitted in the hospital for the post-operative care. But that is uh, very rare, you know, that may occur because you have to, why I'm saying this, because the intercostal bone, I mean, it's not a bone, it is a, it's a cartilage. So you have to have to cut in a region where you have less blood loss on it. He may suffer from blood loss because of skin, uh, some muscle uh, insertion, but if you do uh, very efficiently in that way, you know, with a bone uh, not injuring the, any other fracture, just in, in between the costosternal sternal um, cartilage, the avascular is not much, so uh, they save. So that's why I want to check on that part, rib and sternum. And we'll go on to the next one.
growth and repair. Okay. A vascular tissue receives nutrients by diffusion. Now you have to check the another part. I'll, I'll tell you. This is the tissue. Okay. This is the air vascular tissue. The blood vessels is going over here. Okay. The capillaries are blood cells are going over there and to the top. Okay. Here. It's the blood vessels. It's the blood. Red is blood. Okay. And then here the tissue and this is a tissue which is a cartilage cartilage and there is no blood supply to this one these cells there's no uh, that's why we call it as a as a avascular vascular is somewhere else you know there are in between there is a you know the the capillaries will effuse with interstitial fluid so the fluid is coming out to to reach here these cells you have a matrix and this matrix is not supplied with any of the blood vessels that's why it is a vascular. There's no blood vessels here. But vessels are far away from this. This diffuses, and this matrix will will allow to diffuse all those nutrients and oxygen passing through, and the cells which are surviving here, which is inside a lacuna. This side, side. This is a lacuna is an empty space. This is the empty space. This is the empty space, and this is the empty space. Inside the dot are the cells. The dot. Don't think that this is a cell and this is a nucleus or nucleolus. Don't think so. This is that and the lacuna, L for lacuna, and this is the dot is the cells. So these cells receive food or nutrients <coughs> from the capillary through the diffusion process. The diffusion. Okay. Um, now, what happens when there is a poor nutrition or fracture? Suppose if you don't supply this, you cut out this, this vein or the artery is cut out due to the fracture, you know, that's a rip off and these particular cells, what, what, what will happen to this? Question. Due, during the poor nutrition or you are not eating properly, what will happen? People are going diet when, when you go on loss of weight and everything. What will happen to that time? There are two things they do. Heavy exercise and no, there's not eating much. What will happen? Yes. Because the reason is, is a common sense, but at the same time, scientifically speaking, when you are not, the food is not passing through or nutrients is not reaching to these cells. And these cells, what is the duty of these cells, the function of these cells? The cells will, will secrete more of glycosaminoglycan, extracellular matrix and keep this diffusion process keep going so that this will survive. What will happen if there is cut off the blood supply, there is no blood supply, no blood supply, no nutrition or that you are not eating enough nutrition, it is not passing through and the cells will not survive, it will eventually die, number one. And the amount of matrix to the cartilage is also go low, down. So the diffusion will also go slow and then what will happen, this area become more weak and then uh, more prone to fractures and, and other complications, issues, okay. So this one, these cells are imprisoned. If you say this is the prison cell and this is inside this uh, prison cell, it is there. So it has to pass through, you know, all the diffusion process. That's what I explained to you. And also the endogenous growth, the mitosis, these cells should also can live, it can multiply another two cells. So when it will multiply or mitosis will happen, whenever there is a nutrient and oxygen. If there is no nutrition and it will not give rise to any other matrix or it will not, uh, cells, the cells won't divide, so no mitosis, then it will <coughs> get all complications like that. Uh, you don't get the nest of cells or, or the isogenous group of cells, okay. So there is no matrix down the matrix or interstitial growth. So it will affect, okay. So what you need to do, you have to supply with the enough nutrients and also oxygen as well as, uh, you know, you have to increase this growth during the repair process. Okay, now let's go on to the next one. How the growth will occur into the bone? Appositional growth and another one is the exogenous growth. 
there is a type of growth which is cartilage structure increase in size by new cartilage being deposited its surface. So, I mean when the growth will occur, how the growth will occur, this is the answer for that. The growth will occur, the cartilage structure increase in size, the another one, oppositional exogenous growth for your for your exam. This is a short answer question which I mentioned earlier in the class. You have to come to the class to know or to learn how to answer short answer questions and what are the short answer questions. One of the questions which I mentioned earlier and some another question which I am giving now here is that what do you mean by uh, oppositional exogenous growth and how this growth will occur. It occurs when a cartilage structure increases in size by new cartilage being deposited on its surface. How? Could you repeat that please? How do you get, I mean, how do you get the uh, oppositional or uh, uh, exogenous growth, you know? How do you get it occurs like? This is the cell and this is the lacuna. Imagine the, the white sheet, which is full of a matrix, you know, it's all of the matrix. When this, this is the cell, this is cell and this is cell. And this cell, you know, will, will give rise to deposit onto its surface. It will, it will secrete and then more of the extracellular matrix, okay. And then what will happen when you, when you deposit more and more and more and more of these cells are divided and, and, and the size of this particular cartilage structure because of the deposition and, and then it will on the surface, it will give the new surface cells. These are the new lacuna and this cell. And then eventually what will happen, this extracellular matrix will push this one towards here. It will push here, okay. Initially I explained to you, initially there are two cells in the lacuna. This is a lacuna of one particular, I'm just giving an explanation for the growth of cartilage. Imagine there is a cell lacuna and these two cells are inside. The size of the of the matrix is something like this, okay, right. But this won't do. In these cells, do you think the cells are keeping quiet? No. It is supplied with more of oxygen, more of nutrients and it has to do some work, some function. It will secrete more of extracellular matrix outside because it is not keeping inside that is intracellular, but it gives export outside the cell. That's why I call it as extracellular. You should remember, because I'm repeating again and again, you may get boredom, but I have to explain to you, some of you think that the protein is getting intracellular because your answer wrong in your exam. So that put me more pressure on explain to you what is extracellular and what is intracellular now. Okay, the extracellular matrix will give and, 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 and it is going out. And then the cells also it will divide and that cells also will go out. And then it will produce a lacuna and then the lacuna will stop. So what happened initially, all those surface, these cells and lacuna will be there. Then eventually these extracellular matrix push, it push, it push, it push, it push the away. Then what will happen, this is the one which is the original and then these cells will go far. So what will happen now? You have got extracellular matrix. So this extracellular matrix pushed here. Push, push, push. So that's the growth will occur. One here, initially two cells, now it gives forth more cells and then push far away. So now it's going out. So now the cells, which is the initial size of this cell will become here, this size. Imagine this size and this size. So it's a growth occur. Now you can see the growth of the bone or the cartilage. So are the small circles the cells? Is the new cells, yes. The lacuna, lacuna and then cells, inside the cells, inside the cells. Okay. So that's the uh, air cartoon which I explained to you. Yeah. So this growth, that's are the size and being deposited on its surface, that's what I explained to you. Depend on undifferentiated primitive cells on the surface. That's what I explained to you. Undifferentiated, the one which I explained to you here, undifferentiated, the cells which is going out and then it's going to push forward, okay. All right, next slide. Fracture, 
If the fracture of cartilage, can it repair by itself? No. Why? The answer is, if there is a, a fracture which is occurring here, there is no uh, blood supply, so it will it will die, this tissue. But instead of that, what will happen? Eventually, this cartilage, which is the cartilage here, and the cells, which is over there, if there is a fracture in somewhere onto the you know part, which is uh, something somewhere here or somewhere here, there is no blood supply. No blood which is getting in. So that meaning these cells may die. But instead, what will happen on the fracture at the time, uh, at the area, you will get more of fiber. Fibers. That uh, meaning as a the, the deposition. Fibers um, with uh, macrophage macrophage, you know, blood cells which is nearing by because there is an injury. So when there is a, the site of inflammation, injury, what will happen immediately our body, uh, probably you might have studied in immunology, the cells will migrate towards this here and then uh, it will uh, take out any foreign particles and then the innate immunity and then uh, uh, the inflammation starts and macrophage and, and phagocytosis which will occur. At the same time, more of fiber will be deposited because you want to you want to seal this area to buy fiber. So more of fibers will will, will, will be there because due to the uh, typical inflammatory process. So that fibrous investment, cartilage repairs itself by fibrous scar and formation derived from perichondrium. Perichondrium. What is perichondrium, which I mentioned before? I'll explain to you on the perichondrium. The perichondrium, well, suppose this is your cartilage, and the perichondrium, which I mentioned earlier, as a, as, a, as a membrane which is covering the blue color, which I mentioned here, this is perichondrium. This is cartilage, this is cartilage, green, cartilage, okay, this cartilage, but this is the perichondrium. Peri means surrounding, perichondrium. Perichondrium, this uh, is a covering layer. And this layer, which will, if because of no blood supply and the cartilage is going to die, so to protect that, it will provide of the fiber. That's on the, you know, it's a fibrous scar formation, in other words. Fibrous. F-I-B-R-O-U-E-S, fibrous scar. You can, you can check under the PowerPoint there. And would it ever become again? No, not by extensive new cartilage production. There is no cartilage production after if there is no one. But if you have, have you ever, I don't, I don't want to get anybody injured, but every, anyone got injured before any other things. You get a scar and a hard tissue. Have you ever heard of that one in the bone or the bone of any fracture? Anybody who worked for a karate belt, self-defense. Have you done karate? No, oh, you did karate, right? Kicking and punching and everything? Yeah. So the guys who practice, who practice the karate class, they punch and punch and punch and then uh, have you been the return? of dragon or Bruce Lee, enter the dragon or something like that. How he practiced Bruce Lee on that one, okay. So that's one of the scenario. If anyone got injured into your, your hand or, you know, uh, getting onto your, into a wrist, on the fist, if you're getting onto that, if you see those guys on the wrist, it's full of scar, okay. It's not a scar really on the bone, but the fibrous cartilage. Not just a cartilage, it's the renewal, but the fibrous deposition on that. So if you practice, practice, and your cartilage is being damaged, you have to damage your cartilage in the fist. That's one of the criteria to attain a black belt. Is that right? Because you have to cut the wood, cut the, what is, not the egg, cut the wood, 
and then you have to cut the plank, wooden plank, and then cut the bricks, right? Uh, on tiles, several tiles, and then you have to get it. How do you get it? So your, your fist are, are here, you get only the cartilage, imagine. Make sure by practice, you have to get injured. That's what they said. Yes, you have to get injured. Then only you become strong. How do you become strong? Because of the fibrous. It's not cartilage. It's not replacing another cartilage. No. Cartilage is replaced by this fibrous scar. And the scar, which is not having any innervation, there is no neurons which is present there. It is something like a solid iron which is there in the scar. That's why that guy is who can't break it. And even pain, he will smile, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so he cannot do that. If you break it on a wood, if you do it, you hurt. And then you have pain and you are going to break your bone, not cartilage. You know, don't do that. But you have to practice in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, in a systematic practice. And they do the push-up with their thing on the one hand and the other hand and, and do. And all they develop, in a, in a sense, in a fibrous into that one, in a, in a skull. So, now, any questions? So we have to take some class for karate now, okay. <laughs> now the next one will go. A type of cartilage which we discussed earlier about the classification depends upon the characters, the matrix and type. See, I told you about the hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, fibro cartilage. How do you classify all this cartilage? The classification comes from classification comes from the matrix. Okay, so in the yellow means here the light microscope visible. The no fibers are visible in the hyaline. Just the hyaline cartilage more of water, and hyaline cartilage is the one which I explained to you the embryonic skeleton. At the time of you know the development stage, you get more of the hyaline cartilage. Okay, so that's why they can survive. The elastic cartilage is more of elastic fiber and fibro cartilage is more of dense collagenous fibers. So they will present, they, they, they are present in a different uh, uh, parts of our body. Let us see. Most common type, prototype of all is hyaline. These are the, if I ask you to write a short notes on hyaline cartilage, another short answer question, please note that. Short answer question on hyaline cartilage. I need all these bullet points, okay? Hyaline, most common type, high loss glass of cartilage. And free state is a glassy and translucent bluish and white appearance. And the embryo from form the temporary skeleton. So it's a temporary skeleton. It is not a skeleton, but the skeleton is made up of uh, hyaline cartilage here in embryo. Adult persists as articular cartilage and movable joints and coastal uh, and a rib cartilage, all is in hyaline. Nose, trachea, bronchi, larynx, I mean all of them are in a hyaline, hyaline cartilage. So, the next part is, I'll go on to hyaline components, as I mentioned earlier, collagenous fibril, water, it's not watery, it's a E, it's a typo, so water and the ground substance. Fibrils, they're not visible on here due to its size because si there are fibrils or fibers there, but it is not visible under the light microscope. Size is small. And then wet, wet, 70% water, that's what I, ex uh, and then it present in the gel state, gel state. That's why when the baby dropped, it's full of water and gel, so it is, uh, it is like a cushion. So it is highly protection. Even, not, not only there, you know, you sometimes, you know, the baby fall from their mother's hand and then falling down, but it won't get much injury on that, you know, when, whenever it, it, it falls. So that's why when, when the baby even started walking from the crawling stage to the walking stage, they transfer, they, they will, how many times it will fall? Many times, right? And then after that, what? then it's coming normal. It's coming, it won't cry, probably a couple of times and after that it won't cry. But it won't feel. The same thing, even you walk and then fall, what will happen? You got sprain and then you got a fracture. If I sleep on the, on a watery floor, what will happen? You are breaking it. The same thing is that kid uh, or the baby which is falling down, no it won't. 
So that's the thing because of of the the nature of the matrix, which is also the gel state. Uh, brown substance is a gag that's a glycosaminoglycone and chondroitin sulfate, carotene sulfate, and hyaluronic acid. We will study all these characteristics when we do our lab. Okay, we are going to stain them up in a in a collagen and then, and then cartilage component in in our regular class. I hope in Victoria, are you getting any um, uh, lab? Have you done the lab exams? Victoria, have you done your lab, histology lab? Yes? Yes. Okay. Have you done your exams? No, we haven't had an exam yet. Uh, have you done your uh, microtomy, uh, cutting the sections, processing the tissues? Yes, we, we just started that yesterday. Oh, just started yesterday. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay, let's go here. Elastic cartilage. Again, a short note on elastic cartilage. Okay, you just study this one. I need all the points together. Okay, similar to hyaline, except that matrix impregnated with elastic fibers and resiliency again because of elasticity. Yellow color, fresh state, and more opaque and than in, in hyaline. It is is better than hyaline. Hyaline is more flexible. Here, the single lacuna, the cells are present in the lacuna, any cartilage is the same thing. And no calcification or ossification here. That's a, it's elasticity, elastic. Less accumulation of glycogen and lipids. So that's the another run through of this. An occurrence, where do you occur this? Perichondrium, elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage occur in perichondrium. And growth. Both appositionally and interstitially in perichondrium again, and present in the external ear as well as epiglottis. So you have to have some questions on multiple choice as well. You know what type of cartilage which is present in external ear and epiglottis. Okay, I think you, if you go through the multiple choice questions, the, you will answer all those. Okay, yes. Okay. So that's why people used to get a ear pinch, right? Ear, epiglottis, as well as than the ear, external ear. You won't get, when you get a ear piercing, you won't get the blood, not much. Is that right? I haven't got pierced in my ears. I would like to do that one day. <laughs> but uh, not now. You know, but when you do that, but did you, how much you have, five dollar for piercing your ears? You you get any 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 pain or you get pain right really a little bit and and, and then you just push it in right like a shotgun or something like that put it in sit in that's good <laughs> so you won't get any of the uh, blood loss or anything in in, in in somewhere they have to grow the ears that that's going the long ears you know just growing you know, more on the weight and then it'll go on weight and it'll weight. It will yeah. go loose and then you have a big hole on that one, holy years. <laughs> okay. And one occasion I have seen one patient and uh, somebody throw acid into his face. Rest of the things, you know, all these external years and everything, it's completely burnt out because of the acid. And then, uh, you know, one, of the, one side of the ear, he got only a needle hole in it. That's it. There's no epiglottis, no of this external ear. So that, because it's, it's the acid. So, uh, also you can see the people go get anger, the ears become red, right? You know, or in a cartoon, it'll stick out like in a dog and everything sometimes, you know, listening to you. So, it's it stress, stress, stretching out, right? So, it, it's interesting to know that one, that point. But we will study those external ears and other things in animals in comparative anatomy class and probably next semester we will we will deal. That's interesting one. Okay. Fibrocartilage, it is irregular in dense, are the dense and cell fibrous tissues. Encapsulate cartilage cells embedded within it. Yes, that's the same thing. No perichondrium. There's no perichondrium. Perichondrium they see surface because it is secreted inside. So it never occurs alone, but blends with adjacent connective tissues 
joints and, and, and bones that together. So fibrocartilage, that's the one. And we will be occurrence where do you get invertebral discs associated with the knee, kneecap, mandible. Have, have you got the kneecap? Do you know about what is kneecap? Yes? The joint between the long bone into the knees and thighs and in between that there's a cap in between that. So if it should be in, in a proper shape, in a proper place. If you do sometimes the exercise, hard exercise, the kneecap will fall down, then you have to keep it back and keep it in a position and because of the fibrous cartilage, which is not really strong enough. So that's that will occur anyone. And these are the histological staining. Matrix stain is isodophilic due to collagen type 1 fibers. We will study in, in, in our histo histology lab. All of them pass stain and everything. So, as you can see that one. And here the fibrous tissues from fibroblast. So, more of fibroblast. You will get near to the fibroblast. And now, we will go on to the bone. Two different approaches for the bone. Bone as a tissue, bone as an organ. What I will do, I will give you a break now. And then we will come back and then we will study as a whole of bone. Okay, so we have a break for a fracture of bone. Bone. Come back. The growth of long bones, you get a initially cartilage, so you have to write cartilage. I will I will mask this area, so you have to say what is this? And then ossifying cartilage, stage two. And then what you get the bone formation, this at the top as well as here, you get the bone formation. And then marrow cavity forming at the later on, later stage. And then growth plates will develop. Then bone formation again, secondary ossification centers. And then here the, you get the bone marrow fully developed. And this is the mature bone. So this is the, the different stages of uh, of this bone development, okay? So how much time does a patient have cartilage to The cartilage, that, that's from the adult growth, how long, um, you know, this will go from the baby born, newborn into this you know, adult bone and then what will happen uh, when the age progress, uh, two years, three years, four years, this is become, you know, more of this elongation. As an adult, uh, at what age do you have a, uh, you know, growth spurt and everything which is happening that? Where's the hormonal, more of e the uh, teenage, it's getting on to the adulthood teenage, till it's growing. And then a particular stage and then it stops. That depends upon, there are three factors. One is the nutrients, another one is hormones, another one are genetic factors, everything put together. Okay. So the development, you can see the perichondrium surrounding cartilage is vascularized by capillaries initially. Then the inner cells of perichondrium becomes osteoblast and then lay down the collarbone, midsection of the cartilage become a primary ossification center. Blood vessels with the mesenchyma invade in the upper epiphyseal cartilage became calcified, replaced by spongy bone. I'll go back to this slide, you can explain to you here, probably this is the stage bone formation and marrow cavity. Once this, this is the bone and then it will start stretching, you know, they're going on there. The cartilage present in the embryonic stage. Okay, and ossification is start appearing after the birth and then it will keep on growing, 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 growing and then till the growth spurt exits and then you come down. Okay, now let's go. Perichondrium surrounding the cartilage, this is the one which I just now I mentioned earlier, uh, the different stages in the development. And then similar centers formed in the lower epiphyseal cartilage, how it goes on both the end, up top as well as the bottom, which I explained earlier. So that's what it they grow in length. Suppose if it is not, if you don't eat properly or vitamin D deficiency, as well as if you are of the genetic defect on somewhere, you will not get a straight bone. The bone become bent and the bone shorten and and the, and the particular person's is become very short. Or if you have uh, experienced a lot of calcium and other nutrients, sometimes it's physiological. The people who is a particular area, they may not 
uh, you know, exposed to that much of calcium in the nutrients, their growth is stunted when compared to the person who is eating a lot of cheese and a lot of calcium in their diet, they will grow more. But genetic, some people, they have a genetic deficiencies, they may not grow as that top. So it's a different factors together. Okay. Next one. This is a stage of another mic micrograph where endochondrial ossification center of the long bone here, you can see under the microscope how these different stages which are occurring here. Then bone as a tissue, then we will see as, a, the, as I mentioned earlier, the bone as a tissue, you have got a different cells like osteogenic cell, osteoblast, osteocytes and osteoclast. And we will study, we will see these uh, different type of uh, cells and then their characteristics together as a bone as a tissue. You can see the small bed vessels, this is the cross section of the bone. You can see the, the osteocytes and the osteoblast is laying down over here. Now the blood vessels which is coming over here. So when you do the cross section, you will see these are in the middle and then you get these uh, osteocytes um, you know, osteocytes and, and Harvation canals and canaliculis are there, right? Laying down this, this is a type of how uh, one, one direction. This osteogenic means, you know, it will produce, genic means generation, right? Genics here, bone generations, like osteogenic cells are primitive, pluripotent cells mean it can convert itself into different type of cells. There's a capacity similar to mesenchymal cells and otherwise pluripotent cell like a stem cells. So this is the one which we want to harvest in the adult stem cells, we can do it. And then we can do in a, in a normal stem cells uh, from hematopoietic stem cell, embryonic stem cell, and, and this is coming from pluripotent stem cells, adult stem cell or hematopoietic stem cells. They are present in inner layer of periosteum, so it is osteogenic layer, endosteum. Stem cells are dividing, differentiating different bone cells and except osteoclast. Osteoclast a different type of origin, you have to remember that. Osteoblast is coming from the stem cell, osteoclast is coming from like a macrophage because osteoclast is the one which will remove uh, of the old bone so that the bone is constantly renewing, okay. So that is the beauty of this bone. Osteoblast is, is a cell which will uh, involve the synthesis of collagen, proteoglycan and all these uh, uh, extracellular matrix which is being produced by osteoblast. Osteoblast is a constructive meaning it will produce more of the extracellular provider, okay. The opposite to osteoblast is osteoclast which will destroy, which will remove the old bone. We will see that one in a moment. Resembles cuboidal epithelium, these are some of the morphology of those and uh, they are also, you know, perform the function of constructions. Now we can see the osteoblast in this, this is one osteoblast in the cells, okay, this is a nucleus and what happened in the D here, it gives rise to uh, the matrix, the white color here, you know, this, this one here. Osteoblast demonstrate number of interesting findings, well developed in the Golgi apparatus, also in the cell nucleus is the C, is the cell nucleus where the, all the genes. In the area of collagen matrix, this is the D. Collagen matrix between osteoblasts and the bony trabecula. This is the uh, trabecula. This is the surface area. Okay, and and then here this is the one which is which is the synthesis the extracellular matrix, and then you keep it there. Even it, it produces more of collagen. Um, this micrograph shows the inner aspect of bone. A newly formed bone is indicated uh, by the osteoblast. It's the endosteamal cells, and and these are the different cells, which is osteoclast, which is forming over here. You can see this one. Okay. These are developing, again, developing osteoblast and osteoid. Osteocyte is a bone cells imprisoned in lacuna, which I explained earlier, like, uh, you know, in, in, in this uh, here is the lacuna, the red one, and this dot, that is the osteocytes, which is present inside the bone. Okay, now you go on to the some osteocytes released during fracture from osteoblast, a potential source of bone cells. So that's the another one. It is a diffusion, but it, ga it, it can get into the cells by canaliculi. That's on the, the small channels, which I explained earlier. 
Okay. Osteoclast is the one is a giant multinucleated cells. And this is the other one, you know, you may get in 40 or more nuclei surrounded by eosinophilic cytoplasm. So that is the synthesis from the blood cells. And they also present in the bone and that will remove because of the acid phosphatase. So if you have acid, al al what, what will do the acid in, in, in a system? It will corrode, it will, it will, it will destroy. More of uh, lysosomal enzymes are there in osteoclast. Lysosomal enzymes, it will, it will cause lysis. So in the sense, the more of old, uh, worn out bone cells, it will eat and then will remove the bone cells. Uh, even uh, old osteoblast, it will remove. So what will happen here, it functions as a resorbed bone during bone remodeling. When the old bone or the uh, worn out or the repair process or the damaged bone or the particular uh, type of cells which is, uh, which is not being used, what this osteoclast will eat, it will remove, it will digest, it will remove on that process. So that's why it's the osteoclast. Okay. Now let's go on to the structure of osteoclast. You can see the structure of osteoclast, which will eat, these are the nuclei, and then it will eat these other cells. And now you have, a, you have more of space on this. So that's why if you osteoclast, it will present more in the bone that will lead to osteoporosis. In some of the arthritis condition, you have a porous into the, the bone. When you, when you see under the microscope or uh, uh, even the x-ray analysis of a bone, you have more of pores. The doctor will say your bone density has gone down, meaning you have got a porous bone, meaning you have a lot of osteoclast which will damage your bone. So your osteoblast is being uh, reduced, the number. It is not doing its proper function. It is not depositing the matrix. So you have to have a balance of osteoblast and osteoclast. When you don't have the balance, then you are, you are in a different shape. Suppose if I, uh, you know, draw, uh, this is a, 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 a scale, weighing scale, and you have a osteo Clast, OC, and then osteoblast, OB. It should be in the same one. Suppose if this one, osteoblast, will be more, then it will go down, then and the needle will go down like this way, and this is going up. This will happen during the development, during the, uh, the stages of, uh, you know, uh, when the embryonic stage into the adulthood, uh, and also the fetal development more of osteoblast into this one so that it will it will go so it will tilt the scale on the other. when the old age will come out and then where the osteoblast which is going up like this so you have more of uh, of osteoclast will be there and it will tilt the scale in this direction where you have old age and also a damage or a fracture in that particular region so you have to have you have to have more of osteoplast. Even for the fracture, if you have more of this, you have to make a balance. So you have to supply more of osteoblast and thereby you can repair process. So in the development stage, you have more of osteoblast. When the person is going to be an old age, you have less of osteoblast or more of osteoclast that induces of bone deformities and uh, fractures and everything because of osteoporosis. Okay. The reason for osteoblast, because of more of lysosomal enzymes, the lytic enzymes, so which will, which will eat, which will digest those bone material. That's why you get the porous membrane. Microarchitecture of the bone, which I mentioned earlier, mature and lamellar and mature bone. You have the primary bone, collagen fibers arranged random in woven fashions. These are some of the uh, morphology, primary bones, okay. Secondary bone lamellar bone, calcium impregnated, and then collagenous fibers, tight concentric layers, that's we explained already the same story which I explained earlier. Osteon, Harvation systems, these are some of the, you know, um, mechanisms on how they concentric circles which is appearing onto the bone cells. You can see this one, this picture, Harvation system, or the osteons, and the center here and here where the blood vessels and neurons are present over there. 
osteon present almost entirely in the compact cortical bone and canal equally and everything, whatever I, I'm not going to repeat all of them, but that's the uh, blood vessels supplying. And then here's the high power view, the central canal and harvation system here. In another graph, you can see. Then these are the cells, I mean how uh, the cortical bone, harvation system canal A, harvation system canal A, they supply the, the material of nutrients and oxygen. They call it, the another cell is the osteogenic cell, Oltman's canal, okay. Uh, you can see again the same thing in a different uh, picture, harvation systems, canals, bone repair dynamic living tissue quality based on the repair and fracture. In the sports injury, that's a predominantly occur in the bone fracture. So, in sometimes they said uh, in, in uh, you know, in veterans, in, in the uh, uh, probably in the warfare and they want to have a quick fix like, you know, you have to uh, fix the bone fracture immediately. Is there any method is available? People are working on different type of uh, you know, super glue, giant glue, this glue, that glue, and all. You know, in 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 a surgery, they also do some glue, okay, to heal it. That glue contains some of the stem cells, some of the osteoblasts, some of the matrix. They used to do it. As I mentioned earlier in the lab, um, the people they used to do with uh, with the arthritis, they used to eat more of uh, contracting sulfates and everything. But that. That's okay, but that's that's not going to reach into the bone itself as a matrix because that is going to be digested. Uh, that is one of uh, the pharmaceutical industries or dietary supplement industry. They make the market the product, but that is different story. But the repairing process, we need to get more of calcium and more of hormone, more of nutrients, and it will heal uh, by itself. So here, the toned blood vessels, okay. In the area, so there's a space here, in the area of fracture, cause hemorrhage of the blood clot or hematoma. Circulation to osteon and near fracture site is disrupted. So you get necrosis, so you have in the bone fragment. So fibroblasts are new capillaries from periosteum. Periosteum is the one which is present covering the bone uh, sheath. From there, the fibroblasts invade and clot granulation tissue. So it will give yeah, a type of uh, yeah, fibrous material. Have you ever noticed whenever there is a, a fracture, then the doctor, or uh, uh, they advise the patients to do uh, a lot of physiotherapy exercise. Do you know that one? Why do you need a physiotherapist? Why do you need that one? Or, or do you have to do physical exercise after a yeah, fracture of your bone? you have to get uh, uh, that particular area. If you do some more of exercise with the muscles and the bone uh, blood vessels going through, or uh, the blood supply to the bone will be more, and that will heal quickly. Otherwise, the ossification, the fibrous, which is going over there, that is damaging your bone with the uh, nervous system growth. So you have to break open the fibrous and get more of the supply. So though it is a painful, but they will ask the patient to do that one because the fibrous temporary cartilage, that form, bars the form to later replace bone by callus. The callus is the one which is uh, inhibiting the growth of the bone. So you have to remove that callus by doing a lot of exercise and then, you know, you have to remove it. The inner osteogenic cells, that needs the periosteum. I don't know what happened. It's gone up. It's going backward. Anyway, I have got the other stuff to do. I'll give it to you. The bone matrix, I have, uh, and this we have seen now here, okay. I'll go with this one, osteogenic, okay, osteoblast, osteocytes. And this osteoclast, you can see that osteoclast, which is uh, more of for taking these uh, cells out, because that's, more of um, eating these um, osteoblasts, so you you get more the digestion, and that's all the osteoclast, which is uh, the structure. And uh, this is another way of doing that osteocytes, where the osteocytes, where you know you get the 
the, the canals, is how they're communicating with each other. This is, uh, I, I've given these pictures, I think, in your figures. Here. And uh, I've got one more thing to go on to the fracture. This is the one I want to show you. Sequence of fracture healing. You can see the hemorrhage at the site, clot form, it's a bone fracture. That granulation tissue formed from fibroblasts. Okay, this is a callus, first clot forming and then callus forming and then bony sleeves. You know, you, at the top you get the capillaries and everything, you know, put the healing which is occurring. And then slowly you get the spongy bone replace the callus here. You can see that one here, the callus, a little bit of light. And then you had the healing at the end. You find there's a little bulging of those bones. So if you see people or if you experience any fracture, then after healing the new bone and everything, you will get the bone it will become thicker than compared to the initial stage. See, that's the other. This is the bone repair summary. You can see that one, how the cells are going over there and blood supply, newly formed callus. So this stage, then the healing stage, the callus will be formed. We have to we have to remove the callus formation by doing physiotherapy at the time. So we are inducing more of blood supply and removing the callus. And then eventually the clot is reabsorbed. When you do the exercise, the clot and callus will be removed and reabsorbed and then it will it will heal quickly in this formation. Okay. Did you provide that on the uh, I think so. It is there. It's all the figures. It must be there. The figures go on figures, it will be there. So I'm not going to do, you know. How the bone is being eroded here, you, you can see this one here in this picture, bone eroded because of this the osteoclast which is, which is working on it, which will go and erode the bone. So we don't want the osteoclast. Okay, and, and the calcitonin blocks the calcium mobilization and resorption. So these are the, the one. And then here the hormonal defects, if you say the growth hormone, some people, the face looks a different one because of the bone overgrowth after the puberty agromegaly. Some people looks like this because of the, some deformation, because the gigantism, excess of the cartilage and bone. The chin bone or the, uh, the bone with the cheekbone become broader because of these particular deformities. Okay. And stunted growth, you have also get, uh, you know, the, the influence of ossification centers and epiphysis. See, that's another one where the stunted growth, as well as the absence of gonads or the early gas castration, epiphysis remains, and these are the long uh, extremities. These this are some of the abnormalities, kind okay, the gonadotropic or sex hormone. So the hormonal role on the bone repair, that also plays a major role. Um, you can also check into your, uh, into your, uh, um, Blackboard, I provided some of the figures and some animations that's interesting you can watch. Okay. So some of this one, which is uh, again the cretinism, nutritional deformities. You can see the weight of weight bearing results in the bow leg. The people who got the bow leg because of uh, you know vitamin D deficiency. That's the rickettsia just coming out. And then vitamin C is again the scurvy that's on the clinical aspects. So if you have a lack of protein, and lack of, of uh, vitamin D deficiency, you know, you will get the osteoblast and more of the, you know, retard the grow, bone growth repair, so you get the deformities. You got the bone looks like this in vitamin D deficiency, like this. Okay, the other example, which also I give you as a membranous bone, where the systemosis, these are the, some other joints, the membrane joints, okay. And synchondriosis, where the cartilage junction, and syntosis, the bone to bone connection, and cartilage junction, uh, sim, uh, the symphysis and pubis, you get the synchrondosis. That's another. These are some other junctions where the bone junctions looks like this elbow joints, and finger joints, and all of them. Okay. So you can study into your textbooks and as well as the PowerPoint, which I gave it to you.